Hi, it's Jenny with Easter Sales. Welcome to our training about classroom routines and procedures. Classroom procedures and routines are vital for classroom success. But why? Clearly, in the top pictures, you see a frustrated student and a frustrated teacher. Well, here's some other things that are often experienced when there are unpredictable routines or undefined expectations for kids in the classroom. You see an increase in anxiety, an increase in challenging behaviors, an increase in dependence on adults. You have students that are off task and general confusion. And all of those impact your instructional time. But after implementing procedures and routines, we see the happy kid and the happy teacher. So when you have procedures and routines in the classroom, you see an increase in independence. You see students thriving with an increase in structure. You have a decrease in anxiety, an increase in task initiation, increased student engagement, and a change for the better in LRE. All of those lead to an increase in instructional time. In short, routines are good for everybody. So let's talk more about why routines are so important. They increase independence. So you're gonna have an increase in self-confidence. It's going to free up staff your classroom is going to be more efficient and it's going to give students the skills that they need for daily life. If routines are taught to automaticity, you're also going to see freed up brain space. Routines take brain power until they are automatic. Teaching them frees up that brain space for learning if you can get students doing those routines automatically. So here's an example. Picture your morning routine as you drive to work. While you drive, maybe you think about what you need to do after school, the groceries that you need to buy for dinner, and what you're going to have for dinner. And maybe you have a meeting today at school that you're thinking about. There are so many things that we think about uh, as we go through routine activities. Now imagine that your usual drive's interrupted with a roadblock or there's a wreck in front of you and you have to take a detour. Well, now your brain doesn't have that free space to think about what's for dinner, the meeting that's going to happen at school today, because instead you're thinking about each turn that you need to take to get to work. So we want those routines to become automatic. So our students have brain space to think about other things during routine activities. And then you're going to see a decrease in anxiety and challenging behavior. Predictable events, let the students know what to do. We know that sometimes when students get bored, they're going to engage in undesired or challenging behaviors. So making sure that we tell students what they should be doing gives them something to do. It gives them a purpose, something to focus on. Is it going to work for every student every time? Probably not, but it will have a significant impact on your overall classroom. All of our project prepare work is aligned to tests and the high leverage practices. We know you feel the pressure of getting your content and your essential standards in, and we have some good news for you. Routines and procedures optimize your instructional time. When procedures are in place and students have been taught to use them, teachers actually end up with more time to spend on teaching their content. Without good routines, it's very easy to lose 10 minutes of instructional time. If you lost 10 minutes a day, that's 50 minutes a week. That can really add up over the course of nine weeks or even a, an entire school year. If you add all of that up, that's a big deal. Tests for teacher evaluation tells us what good teaching looks like. And those special education high leverage practices, there are 22 critical practices which are used frequently in successful classrooms. And 
we have pulled out the specific ones in relation to procedures and routines. And many of you will recognize John Hattie in this picture in the corner. He's a leading researcher from New Zealand and his work has influenced the education community worldwide. He has spent decades synthesizing more than 1,400 meta-analyses of 80,000 studies and involving 300 million students. What a sample size of data. The studies included various factors that influence education. And his research is called Visible Learning. And there's a document there. If you go to Google and you type in Visible Learning 250 Influences, this document's going to pop up for you. And it's very interesting. We've pulled a few of these influences from this document for us to consider as we think about classroom procedures and routines. So we have a key there on the left that will kind of help you navigate. So we have that dark blue at the very top. And those are considered to be accelerating student achievement, potentially, and then it goes all the way down to the red, and the red is likely to have a negative impact on student achievement. So let's look at those that we've pulled out. Scaffolding. It has one of the highest potential for student impact in regards to procedures and routines. Self-efficacy, and that's on behalf of the student, teaching them how to be more independent. Time on task, there you have that student engagement. Reduces anxiety, does that sound familiar? We talked about so many of these uh, in the previous few slides. Classroom management as a whole, decreasing disruptive behavior. Anything that decreases disruptive behavior is likely to have a positive impact. And I wanna call out ADHD here. So interestingly, a student with untreated ADHD was the single most likely to have a negative impact on student achievement indicator. How many kids do you have in your classroom with ADHD? How many of them are untreated? If you look at the other two red indicators, you have family on welfare, state aid, moving schools or lack of sleep. There's not much we can do about those bottom two things. Those are kind of outside of our realm of influence, but we can learn more about ADHD and put some interventions in place in the classroom. I really encourage you to go find this document and look at the different influences. It's really interesting and I think you will appreciate the information.